Well, and Austin here again with another long play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Battletoads for the original 8-bit NES. Man, I never thought I'd ever be able to beat this game, and just this past week as of recording this, I finally have for the very first time <laughs> at 33 years old instead of 13, probably when this game first came out. Actually, this game came out when I was like 9 years old, but uh... Man, this game has just been the bane of my existence in terms of video games, and, um, you know, thanks to streaming on Twitch a lot now, I've, you know, a lot of people have been talking me into playing some Battletoads games and stuff like that, and I've been motivated to play it for you guys live, and thus I've been able to practice it live, and after much trial and error and much, much frustration, as some of you guys out there already uh, have witnessed, um, yeah, Battletoads has been dominated. Maybe that's not the right term, but <clears throat> I can I can finish it pretty consistently now. Um, after I beat it for the first time, I went through and I did it three more times, uh, including this long play you're going to see right here. I'm just going to let the intro roll out so you can see all the, you know, kind of the preface and whatnot, the text and, and so forth. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just get straight into the game after this, and I'm going to just sort of explain each stage, stage by stage, as we go along, and just sort of... You know, ramble on, um, speak my uh, speak my mind as as we go through this long play video. So this is going to be about an hour long, uh, full run of Battletoads. I managed to beat this game without continuing. Um, I have a lot of extra lives at the end as well, which was actually the first time that's happened for me. Normally, I beat the game with like one or zero lives left. Uh, so, and here we go. Pretty much about to jump right in. There's the map screen. Skip right through it. And this is the little intro dropping you down to the very first level. A little bit of a frustrating intro, actually, if you're the kind of person that messes up on the first level a lot and wants to reset, you always have to sit through that. <laughs> so it's it's a speedrunner's nightmare. Uh, I am not a speedrunner, but there are a few techniques I use in this Let's Play that I actually learned from watching much better players um, beat the game. And uh, I'll explain those as we get to them. So, uh, when I'm trying to beat Battletoads straight through, um, I want to earn extra lives to make my, my quest, you know, much more likely uh, to see completion. So, one way to do that is to focus on extra lives. And uh, in Battletoads, you've got a variety of different means uh, to combat. You can uh, just punch, you can uh, double tap in a direction, then press your attack, which will do a headbutt, which is very powerful and um, probably the best attack you want to get used to using. But the thing about the headbutt is you actually get less points for doing the headbutt. Um, if you finish off an enemy by just punching them, uh, you'll get 5,000 points versus 2,000 if you headbutt them. Now the reason this is important is that you get an extra life uh, for every 100,000 points. And you can get a maximum of 9 extra lives from points because the score caps out at 999,999. So, uh, when I'm playing this game, I want to max out my score. Um, and you'll do it. Uh, you'll definitely do it uh, before the end of the game, but I want to max out my score as quickly as I can to get those extra lives. And so what I do is instead of just headbutting the guys to kill them really quickly, I'll kill them a little bit slower and I'll get 5,000 points per enemy versus 2,000. And that actually makes a huge difference. Um, you might get a couple extra lives earlier than you would if you just headbutt everybody. So... So yeah, I like to play for points, and something to keep in mind is if you have to continue, well, your score resets back down to zero. That's a whole other nine set of lives you can you can uh, earn again for yourself. Now, there was an extra life right there for juggling the birds, and for more extra lives, um, I'd say you could probably get a total of at least 20 extra lives throughout the course of the entire game. Probably more if you manage to play out this section really well. I do not play it out really well in this video, as you'll see, but every bird that's on the screen, you have the opportunity to juggle them, and uh, after a certain amount of hits, uh, the last hit on the bird will be an extra life. So not only will you get a ton of points for juggling them, because the point value keeps increasing every time you add a, a successive hit, 
uh, but the last one is an actual extra life. So, you know, there's probably, if you played out this level just right, there's probably the potential to get like 30 extra lives in, over the course of this game. So the reason I stress extra lives so much is that Battletoads is a ridiculously difficult game and you're gonna need those extra lives probably no matter how good you are. And if you're the kind of person that's streaming on Twitch that's not entirely focused on, you know, the game itself because you're looking at chat and talking to people, it's a little bit harder to, to do that all at the same time and keep your focus on the game. So you're gonna really want those extra lives and so when I play this game uh, I, I play all my video games for survival pretty much I don't speed run them I don't play for score typically um, I uh, I play for survival and um, so in the case of Battletoads I play for extra lives basically I want to get those extra lives to uh, it makes you feel more comfortable as you're playing uh, and in Battle 2, that's really important too. Like, you don't want to be stressed going through a level, being like, Oh, I gotta go through the final stage on one life. Because uh, that affects your performance, I think. It affects your mindset, which then affects your performance. And so, if you can get those extra lives racked up really, really early, you feel really confident and you feel like nothing can touch you. And that's kind of how you need to feel in Battle 2. It's as crazy as it sounds. You've got to, like, work yourself up and play a mental game with the game. It's, it's, uh That's how tough Battletoads is, guys. It's, yeah, not an easy game, so. So, we should be getting close to the end of this level. And one little trick here you can do in this stage is basically hold against a wall. You'll turn into this, like, battering ram, basically. And you can basically kill anything in one hit on this level. Uh, the only issue with it is that, again, um points, you know? You do get actually 2,000 points per kill, um, but you put yourself in a position where it's a little bit harder to juggle the birds afterwards, so it's actually better to try to just kill enemies, or at least the birds, uh, not using the battering ram. You can use it for the, uh, you know, the Venus flytrap type of enemies, but uh, for the birds, I would just swipe them with the sword that puts you in a better position to start juggling them. So this level here is the infamous Turbo Tunnels. A lot of people have trouble with this level. Um, the more you play this game, you'll, the more you'll realize this is actually probably one of the easier levels in the game. As, no, as notorious uh, as this level is, um, I think it's just notorious because a lot of people haven't gotten past it. And a lot of people have no idea how much more ridiculous this game actually gets after this level. Uh, keep in mind, there's 12 stages in this game. This is only level 3. So, you guys will see how absurd the game gets uh, later on in the game. It's it's a complete memorizer. Like, you have to memorize this game. And th this level is no exception as well. So that was another extra life. That was my third extra life from points. You notice my extra lives are capped out at five. Uh, it does count past the five that you see up top, so... So I don't remember if I actually died on the turbo tunnels on this long play, but I do die several times throughout the, the course of the game. This is not by any means a, a perfect run. So the, the thing about the turbo tunnels as well is that, you know, a, a lot of uh, your chance for success is just your familiarity with the, the patterns and so forth. You're probably not going to get to the turbo tunnels and beat it on your first try. It's possible, but it's probably not going to happen. So, it's, you know, you just play through the, the game again and again and again. You get more familiar with the, the sections uh, of the Turbo Tunnel. You know, there's four, five, or six different... I think it's five or six different sections on the Turbo Tunnel. And they happen the same way every time you play it. So, you know, as long as you kind of do some light memorization, uh, just have a basic idea of what's coming up. You know, you should be able to progress through it uh, without too much of a problem. That block right there that just uh, came by is actually set uh, dead center of the track. So you need to either sit all the way at the top or all the way at the bottom to get past it. So that's a little, you know, a little trick they throw your way. And a section coming up here, we're going to have to actually start jumping manually to get over 
the uh, the platforms. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. There's gonna be an exclamation mark blinking, and that's right here, actually, right as I as I mentioned it. So I like to jump on the bottom. Uh, it seems like there's less of a gap between platforms. I could be wrong. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Warp zone. Uh, this is the last section that most people have problems with. It should be noted that the tenth block is actually a warp zone. If you slam into the tenth block. Uh, you'll sort of fall into that sort of, you know, little beam of light, and you'll warp two levels ahead. It's good to know the warp zones in this game, uh, because if you're trying to just get through the game as quickly as possible, or practice a later stage in the game, you can sort of skip some of these levels. Like, you can skip the ice cave here, which is actually kind of a, a really tough level, uh, if you're not familiar with it. So that was a little bit of a speedrun technique there, I saw in some speedrun videos. Uh, normally you're supposed to just stop, grab the snowballs, and throw them at the, uh, throw them at the snowmen, but apparently you can just skip them completely, and I didn't know that, uh, until I watched a speedrun video. So, there's gonna be a couple other tricks on the snow stage in particular I use, um, to get, to make some parts a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, as far as warp zone, warp zones, guys, uh, there's a warp zone on level 1 right at the beginning, there's a warp zone in the turbo tunnel I mentioned, um, then when you go to the snake pit, uh, there's another warp zone, and then I think that's it. Uh, then you gotta go through the rest of the levels, basically the second half of the game, straight through. And, um, one, uh, trick you can actually use for these ice blocks is you need to pick them up so they can basically bash open these, these walls. Um, say, if the ice block was positioned on the far left of that, uh, pole, you can actually get on the other side of the pole and punch through it and stop the ice block. Uh, in safety. That was another bit of a speedrun technique there. I learned from a video where you can basically headbutt your way over those spikes. And I'm gonna do that again on another very, very tricky gap coming up here. Oops. Ooh, that was a bad death. I, I, I remember that happening. <laughs> yeah, getting getting knocked out by the, the snowman in one hit is never fun because it shouldn't happen. It's, you know, it's really easy to avoid these guys and when they kill you like that, it's just... <laughs> like a kick in the nuts. So let's see if we can get I can get by it again. There we go. So throw the snowballs up, and I think this next part. No, it's not this part. It's gonna be an extra life up here. So you know I was mentioning extra lives and so forth. You can get extra lives from points, but there's also a lot of extra lives thrown throughout the levels. Um, there's, uh, there's at least one here, there's, there's two in the, uh, the surfboard level, and this is the trick I was telling you guys about. Just tap it like that, and then toss it over. Otherwise, it's a little tricky to, uh, to get control over, over that block. The speedrunners actually do it in a very stylish manner. <laughs> you can watch their videos and see exactly what I mean. So, there we go. That's the other trick I learned from watching the speedrun videos, you can basically just headbutt your way over that gap. That gap is set up to where the ceiling is very low, and if you try to do a full jump, you're not gonna make it, it's pretty much impossible. You have to do like a baby jump, but the baby jump's even hard to do, because you're sort of hopping off the, uh, you're hopping off the, uh, the hill as you're going down it, and it makes your jumping very inconsistent, so, you know, if you just run down that hill, and then do a headbutt, you'll just headbutt right over the spikes. Uh, but you do have to be careful because there is a snowman there and you have to kill him. This is another trick I learned from speedrunning, from watching a speedrunning video. You can just skip that top section completely. Uh, once you see the, uh, the big uh, walls disappear, sort of like disintegrate, then you can, you know, the exit opens up. And that's pretty interesting, you know, watching guys speedrun these games can teach you a lot about tricks and whatnot um, that you probably didn't know existed and it can help your uh, you know your progression through these games it can make life easier so there's gonna be an extra life right here and I miss it so that's dumb <laughs> but again since I've been sort of focusing on points I probably have an extra life extra than I normally would have here um, for getting points well, that's not actually true, because I did die a couple times in the snow cave, but... Um, but that's, yeah, that's Battletoads for you. You can expect to die at least a few times when you try to run through this game. Uh, I think really no matter how good you are. Um, 
I mean, it, Battletoads is a tough game. You gotta get everything just right, all the pieces, all the cards have to fall, you know, in, in the right spots for you to, to get through this game without dying. I think it's definitely possible to do it, but it's it's very, very tough to do it. And I think that's why they give you so many extra lives. I think you and the developers knew that, like, chances for survival were, you know, very, very small in this game, even for really good players, so... People that are familiar with the game. So this guy, uh, I'm basically gonna start juggling him. And that's really the trick to beating this guy. Try to run away from him, because the second he hits you, he can just jump up high and just stomp on you. And I'm doing a really bad job of cornering him, but there we go. That's what it's like. So typically you want to do that just immediately. You don't want to just <laughs> get hit a couple times and then start juggling him. Because it actually feels really bad to lose lives on this boss. Because he's not really hard, but if you just... If you don't play safe and if you don't play smart, you will get killed several times. So... Uh, I don't recommend taking him on with your fists, it's just too much work. So just grab the stick, and just pummel him over and over. So these mines here will kill you in one hit, so you have to watch out for them. This section gets faster and faster. Uh, here's an extra life up here. Ooh, and I missed it, wow. I remember, like, doing a really bad job at collecting extra lives on this playthrough. A really bad job, actually. I was kind of, like, disappointed in myself as I was playing. I was like, seriously? <laughs> I never miss these extra lives on this stage. And to miss them on the long play was just pathetic, so... So, we're in the Snake Pit, and this is also sort of an infamous level. It's a very challenging stage if you're not... If you don't know the patterns. But if you do know the patterns, it's, it's not that bad. You just have to be very, very focused and, uh, have some patience. So this first snake pit screen is actually the only screen on the snake pit where you can't die. And it's probably one of the only screens in the entire game where you can't die. Uh, there aren't any enemies to speak of, and there's the warp zone I was talking about. There aren't any enemies to speak of, and you can literally just sit there as long as you want, because you have no time limit. And here's a little trick. Um, well, I already did it, but you can actually headbutt into the snake, and you'll sort of rise up a little bit. It's kind of funny. <laughs> That's something I actually figured out playing the Genesis version of Battletoads. And not knowing I could do it in the NES version, but uh, I tried it in the NES version right afterwards, and yep, you can do it. Speaking of Genesis version, you probably will see a long play of that version, but it's really, it's not nearly as good as the NES version. It's, it's, it's glitchy compared to the NES one, and it makes it much, much more frustrating to play. Uh, there's also certain parts on the Snake Pit, there's a shortcut you can take on the very end of the Snake Pit on this version. You cannot do it in the Genesis version, uh, which is frustrating. So the Snake Pit is pretty much, you know, the epitome of just memorization. You need to know what's coming up on this level. You need to know where the snakes are coming from, where they're going to, whether there's going to be spikes that you have to jump over. You need to plan ahead on this stage, and you need to know what's coming up, otherwise you're, you're not going to survive. And that's why this level is really tough for new players at first, because it's, it's sheer memorization. And... You know, a lot of Battletoads can be summed up in the same way, basically. It's just sheer memorization. But, there's also a level of skill that's required in certain parts. And, I'd actually argue the Snake Pit also requires skill, because you need to have precise timing as well. You need to jump at the right times and so forth. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. And here's the, uh, the little shortcut I was talking about. Just jump over, like that. The speedrunners actually will take the risk and just jump over before the snake comes up on the other side. Which makes sense for them, because they're trying to beat the game as quickly as they can. 
and uh, I believe I actually had to get up and take a break here for just a minute. So I'll let you, I'll let you, you guys jam out to the uh, the pause theme. It's good to show that off as well. <laughs> a lot of people love the uh, the pause theme for Battletoads. It's just funny. <laughs> I think the Genesis version actually doesn't have this like funky like pause theme. It just either it stops or it just takes the existing music and like takes some instruments out. Actually, I think those are the Game Boy versions that do that. Um, the Genesis version, I think, just pauses the music completely, which is weird. Like no little funky beat or anything like that. There we go. I think I was actually taking a bathroom break. <laughs> I think I drank a lot of water before starting this long play. <laughs> Normally I would just cut that out, but because it's Battletoads and it's got the funky theme, I figured it would be fun to let you guys hear that. So this is the uh, the fire zone. This is not... It's a, it's a tricky level if you've never played it before. It's similar to, say, the turbo tunnels in, in setup, uh, but these guys are a lot more threatening now. Granted, they can be killed in one hit, they, uh, they'll, they'll also kill you in one hit. Um, well, they have a greater likelihood of killing you in one hit, so... And they move a lot faster on this stage, so you gotta be, watch out for them. So, these are the logs, and... When you first play this game to get to the log section, you wanna just stop and... And watch the patterns, basically. And um, some logs don't come all the way up to you. You need to actually jump onto the logs and you need to basically get your timing just right. So if you just sit and watch the logs come in, you can sort of predict when and where to jump and you'll, you'll get through them without a problem. Now these guys that are floating down, you can actually attack them. And I did not know this until a couple sessions before doing this long play. And if you get it just right, you can actually just punch all of them down. There is a way to also just avoid them if you want to go that route, but you have to be really careful because if they hit you, they pretty much will kill you in one hit, it seems. So... So now, much like the Turbo Tunnels, uh, you've got a section where you have to avoid objects coming your way. And this one mixes up it up a little bit because you're, you're, you've got the entire screen space to work with. You can go all the way to the right, all the way to the left, all the way up and down. Um, but this is... Probably the part of Battletoads that is definitely the most uh, most revolving around sheer memorization. And there's another extra life. You have to know the patterns. So this part right here is not too bad. It's just a bunch of fireballs coming your way. And I don't know if they're randomized or not. Um, but they, they come out in what seems like a somewhat randomized manner. They might actually be, um, you know, predictable. It's just I've never bothered trying to figure out this pattern because it's not really that hard, so... But every other part of this this level uh, definitely requires some memorization. And is this the rocket section? Okay. Really neat trick here I learned from a, a friend on Twitch is that you can actually sit straight down on the bottom of the screen here. And the bottom rockets actually won't hurt you, even though they touch you. That doesn't work in the Genesis version. I tried it. Uh, the bottom rockets will kill you. So, it's a little bit of a shame they took out some of those tricks in the Genesis one. The reason I say it's a shame, because for a game like Battletoads, it's, um... It's an extremely difficult game, so it's like, you know... I look at tricks like that as just sort of like a bow and being tossed to you, right? But in the Genesis version, they're like, No, we're gonna make an already mostly impossible game, like, even more impossible, so... So this is the part where sheer memorization comes into play. If you don't know to position yourself right at those exact spots, you're gonna die. And on this last section, you wanna get all the way up to the front, just about, for the very last uh, wall that comes past you, and you'll see exactly how I do it. I'm not gonna even explain it, you can just watch. Just like that. If you sit all the way in the back, or um, if you sit all the way in the back, you're not going to be able to get through that last wall. You have to actually, for the last one, sort of move backwards and down 
uh, towards it. So this is a, a pretty challenging level. Um, I think I get through it without too many problems, but there's a lot of instant death scenarios on this stage that you have to watch out for. And that stick on the wall, you can actually headbutt for 2,000 points. So if I don't have 999,000 points when I get here, and usually I don't, I don't even think it's possible to have that score by the time you get here, uh, I will headbutt the, uh, the stick on the wall. I mean, 2,000 points, it all adds up. You gotta think about it as all adding up. So by killing two enemies, I got 4,000 points. And again, it adds up. And it actually starts to add up very quickly once you start getting, like, you know, killing enemies with your hands and, you know, getting 5,000 points. Now, if you have the stick in hand, you get a lot less points for using the stick because it's safer. It's got, you know, a longer range, it kills enemies very quickly. So, if you've got the stick, but you still want to get more points, you can headbutt the enemies, even though you have the stick. Just like that, 2,000 points. Watch out for that uh, gas that comes out, it'll kill you in one hit. It's, yeah, deadly stuff. And the hitbox is kind of large on it, so even though it doesn't look like it hits you sometimes, it will actually hit you, and you have to be very, very careful. You've also got these fans up top that suck inwards, and they will kill you in one hit, just like that. But fortunately, there was an extra life there. See, and I'm already starting to mess up. That's what Battletoads does to you. Uh, you have a good run, then it kills you once, and then you lose all focus. It's, it's kind of weird how it works. So these fans you can actually avoid if you're running in the other direction, but if you're walking, they suck you in and kill you in one hit, so you have to watch out for that. Uh, dashing in this game can be a little tricky. You have to double tap in a, in a direction, but when you're being pulled in another direction, as is, it's, it's tricky to actually get the dash correct and actually start dashing. It's, the game's a little finicky about how it registers your double tap, double tap inputs. But it's, it's a necessary skill to get used to, being able to just double tap and dash out of nowhere, basically. Especially later on in the game. So this is robo uh, I think this is probably the toughest boss in the game. And the reason I say that is that there's very, very little margin for error on this boss. And ideally what you want to do is try to get him in a juggling pattern and just constantly headbutt him. But it's, I'm kind of going back to the whole double tapping issue, it's, it's tough to be able to juggle him consistently, and I got punished there because my character punched down instead of punching him to the, to the left or up or something like that. And that's another issue with this game. And look at that. If you whiff, you're, you're, it's pretty much guaranteed death. Uh, his shots don't kill you in one hit, but you'll get hit three times by the shots, which will take away all your health. So. I lost two lives there. Uh, that was actually better than what I what usually happens. Usually I lose like four or five lives on him. And so yeah, he's a very tough boss. Uh, if you play it slow and patient, you should be able to take him out without too much trouble. Or if you can do it like the speedrunners and get him in a, like an exact type of pattern, you can literally just juggle him back and forth without ever touching the ground. So. Now this level is uh, the Terror Tubes, and this is the level that gave me the most hell back in the day when I was a kid, and was about as far as I ever got in the game. Uh, and the last couple of weeks I've, I've been practicing this level quite a bit, uh, which was, again, this was my major roadblock to completing the game. And it's a tough level, it's, it's sheer memorization, and you guys will see exactly what I mean as I progress through. This part right here is actually why I say it's sheer memorization. 
You get these spike pits as you're falling down. If you don't know to turn left or turn right as you're falling down, you're gonna die. That's as simple as that. And there's another part in this game where you're getting chased by those things again, but underwater. And there's another part where if you fall straight, you fall straight down, you'll die. You have to actually turn. But you don't know to turn until you actually make the mistake of dying. Which is weird. So, uh, that first jump was actually really tough for me. Um, when, uh, I was first playing this game. Um, the jumps out of the water are a little weird in this game. You have to actually sort of... Hold, hold A as you float up to the water and your toad will automatically jump. You don't need to keep mashing A. And for certain jumps on this level, you have to actually get out of the water in that manner. Otherwise, you'll hit the ceiling, fall down, hit some spikes, and die. And it's frustrating. So again, I had some good advice from uh, you know a fellow Twitch streamer who really helped me out on this stage in particular. So... You know, this game's all about knowing the exact tricks and the exact uh, motions uh, to progress through. And so this is the uh, the last section with uh, these these things chasing you. And uh, then we're actually pretty close to the end of the stage, fortunately. But again, this is it was extremely frustrating to have to learn these sections because, you know, you might spend ten tries trying to get past one one part. And then you'll spend another 10 tries getting past the next corner after that part. Because the game just throws, like, it's just, it throws curveballs curve at you all the time. And it's very, very tough. So here we got these little ducks. These guys are major a-holes. And, um, what I like to do is punch them once. Uh, they'll face the other way. And then you can just pummel them from the back. Uh, you gotta be careful though, because sometimes your last punch goes through them like that, and they pretty much will kill you in one hit. Fortunately, the spawn point, um, the checkpoint basically has an extra life, so as long as you play it right, you can get, you know, an in infinite amount of extra lives, basically. So, Battletoads does ha have that going for it. There are a couple sections in, in the game that'll always give you an extra life to make practicing a little bit easier. But it's only very specific sections, so it's not like every section is just going to hand you out extra lives. The game doesn't really work like that. There are a lot of extra lives thrown throughout the game, but, you know, don't expect there to be an extra life on every single section in this game. So this is just my strategy for defeating these ducks. Some people just go right in and just start punching them as fast as they can, and it seems to work. Uh, this last duck, you can actually punch... Um, and then just jump over him. And that's probably the best strategy for that last duck. And right here, there's going to be a little goldfish. And I just sort of pass through him. Sometimes I'll sit on the bottom there, and he'll just float off screen and then just, just disappear for good. Um, but he's a very threatening enemy. I'd say more threatening than the sharks. Uh, the sharks, if you do like a zigzag motion, it seems like they have less of a chance at actually getting to you. So it's funny, he's like kind of floating down the screen with me. But that's it. Level complete. So this next level is the Rat Race. This was a very challenging level for me to learn as well. Uh, but there are a few tricks I learned from watching a long play on YouTube on how to, how to complete it. The first two sections really aren't that tough. Uh, but the third section is really, really challenging. And as you can see, you can actually headbutt the rat. And to give you a preface here, um, basically what you need to do is get to the bottom of the screen before the rat does. There's this big thing of dynamite or bomb or whatever, and you've got to basically destroy it before the rat gets there. Otherwise, he gets there, sets it off, and you die. Now this part you can just fall straight through. Oh, I think I actually die here a couple times, I remember now. If you get it just right, you can fall all the way down without any problems. And I didn't get it right. Look, I, <laughs> I just died again. Uh, which is actually kind of funny because when I was streaming this game, I think I only died there the first time, and then I watched a video on how to do it, and then I just got through it without any problems again and again. 
that was really close that time. So hopefully that's the last time I died here. I don't remember. Oh, and I missed the headbutt. You don't want to miss on the rat race. Although this is the second rat race, so, you know, it's not as much of a threat uh, for you to miss. But on the third one, you, you literally can't miss, otherwise you're, you're done. There we go. Alright, so this part of the rat race is really where your double tapping comes in handy. You need to constantly double tap to start dashing. And if you don't, you're not going to win this, this rat race. And it really helps to know exactly what's coming up ahead. Um, the long corridors like this is where the rat always catches up to you. And this is where your headbutting will come into play. Also, uh, the sections where it's just going back and forth like this, these are where you actually uh, pass the rat. So the rat catches up to you a lot easier in these long sections, and I like to headbutt him based on the video I saw, and it seems to work really well. But if you miss, uh, it puts you at a major, major disadvantage. And then that's it. You gotta watch out for that last platform because it's, uh, you know, electricity in this, on this third rat race. And so sometimes you get down there to the bottom with the rat just behind you, and you'll get zapped, and the rat will get ahead of you, and you'll lose. Fortunately, on this version of, of the rat race, you can actually, it'll actually start you off on the rat race part that you're on. So if you're on the third one, the checkpoint will be at the third one. In Battletoads and Battle Maniacs for the Super Nintendo, you have to go through all three rat races again if you lose at the third one. It's a little frustrating in that version. But I think they did that because Battle Maniacs has less stages than the original Battletoads. So they made the checkpoints a little more brutal in that game in certain places. I don't have a good pattern or a good uh, any good advice for this boss really. All I know is that you can you can basically ram them straight up front, but your timing has to be like perfect. Otherwise, he he pretty much rams you, and when he rams you, it's probably instant death because he'll just stomp over he stomp over you after that, and you'll die. I think a strategy early on is to get him in the right corner and he just sits there like an idiot. Uh, and then he starts walking slowly at you and you can jump behind him and attack him. But once he starts moving fast, I just take him head on basically. Alright, so this is the Klinger Winger. This is an interesting stage. Uh, you basically have to just hold the direction that you're going. And that the arrows are pointing. And you've got to you've got to press the the next direction like right as you right as you go around the corner. And if you don't, your character slows down, and then um, the ball catches up with you and kills you in one hit. So I don't think I die uh, on this part, but this is a part where a lot of people die. A lot of people have trouble with this stage, and I find that if you change the direction of your input right as the sound is made. Um, you should just continue on without uh, losing speed or anything like that. It's really hard to describe. It's the kind of thing you've got to just play and feel out for yourself. But that's kind of how I do it. So wait for the sound and then press the opposite direction or the next direction. Now there's also a level just like this in Battle Maniacs for the Super Nintendo, but they go even they go a step farther and they add jumps and walls you can smash into, which makes it even harder. So after I actually beat Battle Maniacs before I beat the first Battle Toad, so coming to this, this was like a cakewalk in comparison. Except that in this one you've got to actually fight the thing that's chasing you. So my strategy for this guy is to just headbutt him.
Just like that. When he goes off screen, you need to just start moving in the opposite direction, and he won't hit you. It's the kind of boss you need to just watch his movement, and that's it. If he's bouncing off screen, don't try to attack him. Just wait for him to come back down, do some baby jumps, and then use your headbutt. Just like that. He doesn't actually take that many hits compared to other bosses in the game, so... And that boss was a pain in the ass when I first played the game, but... You know, the more I played it, the more I just took my time, I realized he actually was a pretty easy boss. So this is the revolution, the final tower in the game. And then at the very top of the tower, we get transported off to fight the Dark Queen herself. This is probably the hardest level in the game. But as you'll see, it's definitely impossible to beat it. It's not impossible, but it's very frustrating. It's a lot of memorization, a lot of familiarity with what's coming up. It's sort of the culmination of all your learned Battletoad skills. Um, for the final stage in the game. So these gold rhinos are kind of a pain as well. They'll they'll dash at you, and um, once they hit you, you're probably... Well, they kill you in, I think, about two hits, so... They can be very, very frustrating. What I like to do is smack them, run up to them, smack them, run up to them, smack them, run up to them, and the next one's gonna take four hits. But you gotta get your timing just right, otherwise they'll punish you. And you've also gotta be careful if you run up to them not to headbutt by accident, because you're running, you're in that running animation. If you press your attack too soon, you'll do a headbutt instead of using your stick. And these green clouds, they basically come down and rotate around the opposite side, and you basically have to headbutt them. So this is our first checkpoint, once you get to these red guys, that is your first checkpoint. And uh, they will, they'll actually eat you in one hit. So, you need to smack them, smack them, let them do their thing, and then go back and hit them again, just like that. Uh, these guys, they'll kill you in one hit as well, if you touch their little bubbles or whatever. So, just avoid them. Uh, I don't need points anymore, because I, I'm maxed out on points. So I can't actually get any more extra lives from points, so... Uh, the, the method of me killing enemies doesn't really matter anymore. So at this point, since I don't have uh, the room for more extra lives, I'm basically just taking my time. So coming up here, we're going to have to grab onto some some poles and basically just avoid getting blown off the whole tower. And you'll see what I mean in just a few moments. And those little green platforms, they disappear and reappear. You have to be very, very precise with those because they will just... Um, they'll just disappear right underneath your feet and you'll die. The second the, the screen on the bottom uh, goes up and rises above a platform um, means you can basically die by touching the bottom of the screen. Very similar to how it works in Contra on the NES. So you have to be very, very careful about that in this stage. It's something you had to worry about in other vertical levels, but it's it's the biggest deal in this stage. So right here, just hold on to these. And there's like three or four different sections of these where you've got to hold on and not get blown off. It's a little random, actually. You're like going up this tower, then this big-ass face comes up, and it just starts blowing at you. You're like, that's kind of creepy. So this part right here, you want to wait until all your platforms appear, and then immediately jump up. Like, the timing is very, very precise on that. And you're probably going to see me go through this section a couple times. This is a tough section. It's actually harder in the Genesis version, if you'd believe it. In the Genesis version, it's a little buggy. 
Uh, your jumps don't go as high, your character doesn't snap the platforms quite as well as he does in this one. So this level is actually harder in the, the Sega Genesis version of the game. Oh, bad death. Bad death. You get punished. You gotta do it all over again. Not all over again, because there is a checkpoint, but man. The checkpoints in this level are pretty brutal. You really, really gotta know what's coming up ahead. Otherwise, you're gonna be repeating the same screens over and over again. Alright, so this is the last section of the tower. This guy will just blow you right off these platforms. So my strategy I found is to just try to go up as fast as you can. And this is sort of a safety platform here. Oh, and I died. That was really bad. That was the last platform I needed. The one that would have fall, uh, fallen down a little bit when I touched it. So again, you know, it's all trial by error. Uh, trial and error on this final stage in the game. Fortunately, the final boss is not really that difficult, so at least they give you a breather at the very, very end of the tower. And that's it, final boss. So with the Dark Queen, every time you hit her, she basically rises up a little bit, and then turns into this tornado. And so you want to try to hit her as many times as you can before she gets too high for you to be able to touch her. And then that's it, you basically just rinse and repeat. Uh, again, it's not a very difficult final boss, fortunately, because the rest of the game is such a pain in the ass. Oh, the game is such a pain. 
Now I'm getting a little reckless because I know the boss is easy and I know I've got a bunch of extra lives. Which is really the first time that's happened for me when I've gotten to this point in the game. Uh, usually I die either before the, the last tower or I, I, I get here with three lives and that's it. And I've got, a, I've got three lives to work with going up that entire tower. With the potential for one extra life through points starting from the bottom going all the way to the top. Because again, every 100,000 points is an extra life. And you definitely get one by going from the bottom to the top. Um, that is, if you if you do it right, if you just use your punches and so forth, again, you get more points for, for punching as the finisher than you do for headbutting. So, but there we go, that's it. It's funny, like, it's a little misleading, like, she comes back up and you're like, oh god, is there gonna, is there gonna be a second form that's a lot more difficult? But no, she just, like, floats off and that's it. Kind of a cool background effect with that, like, blue wall sort of, like, scrolling downwards. So in the Genesis version, um, you get just like this screen with the bird and then that's it. There's no roping your way back up to your battleship, there's no ending text here. It literally just skips right back to your title screen. <laughs> and that's it. Um, so there you have it guys, Battletoads for the NES, a full one credit clear long play of the game. Uh, if you're not familiar with this game, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, I do recommend giving this game a try, if only because it's Battletoads. Expect to get frustrated, um, but I like the game a lot now that I can beat it. <laughs> so, alright guys, I'm out of here. Again, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if uh, you're not already, uh, if you haven't already done so to this channel. Uh, you can also catch me on Twitch.tv. Uh, check the links in the description box below for that. I stream uh, mostly retro content. And I'll go on kicks where I'm just trying to beat a single game like Battletoads and just play that over and over on stream so you guys can catch that if you want. Alright, well thanks again for watching um, and take care guys.